Hey, what's going on guys? You know, there are many different ways to make chili and I love chili in all sorts of different forms. Uh, but there's one chili recipe that actually stands out from all the rest and that's a chili verde. Chili verde, it's basically a green sauce chili and it's really, really delicious. Uh, my particular recipe is a pork chili verde where I take chunks of pork, season them up, give a really beautiful sear on it to seal in all that flavor and keep it nice and tender and juicy. And it's all simmered in a homemade verde sauce that's actually really easy to make, but it's huge on flavor. So uh, I'm excited. Let me show you how to make it. All right, chili verde, my friends. The first thing you want to do is uh, make our verde sauce. And uh, uh, the secret of this whole recipe really is in that verde, that delicious green sauce. And that has three primary components, and that is tomatillos and poblano peppers and also jalapeno peppers for a little bit of extra kick to it. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is we're going to set these up for roasting. Um, take your jalapeno peppers and you're just going to uh, remove the stems and just slice it in half lengthwise like so. Real little simple slice down the center like so. We're going to set this onto a baking sheet. And I'm going to repeat with all of my uh, jalapenos and poblanos here. All right, and the poblano peppers, I like to slice them down the middle so they can lay extra flat. So you can see like it's more flat this way, slice it like so. I'm going to remove the seeds, just watch out for flying seeds. I'm using uh, three good size jalapenos and I'm using three good size poblano peppers. Um, sometimes the ratios can vary a little bit. And remove the stems. If you need to slice it off, you can. Kind of like so. A lot of times I just kind of grab it and yank it off. And seeds fly everywhere. All right. All right, so I got my peppers here. Now I'm gonna get a, uh, let me get another baking sheet for my tomatillos. All right, so for the tomatillos, my friends, here I have two pounds of tomatillos and I've removed the outer husks. And uh, these are delicious. Uh, tomatillos, this is a reason to buy tomatillos so you can make a fantastic verde sauce. You can make salsa verde. Um, this is very much like a salsa verde, but we're, today we're making for chili verde, which is just awesome. So I'm gonna slice this down to the center, like so, with the, uh, like the stem part on top. I'm just gonna lay these onto a, a lightly oiled baking sheet. Very easy. So again, two pounds of tomatillos, and it's forgiving. If you wanna make an extra large batch, you can. Um, but two pounds is very good. We'll give you a good amount. All right, so let's get these all set up. All right, I've got my tomatillos all set here. Now that everything's on the baking sheets, everything is skin side up, uh, I set my oven to broil, and I'm gonna broil everything together. Uh, there are different ways that you can roast these ingredients. Uh, tomatillos you, or, and peppers, you can roast them at like 350 to 400 in the oven. Um, with peppers, you can roast them however you want to. If you want to roast them on the grill or roast them on your stovetop over direct flame, it's pretty much however you want. Uh, but for today, I'm making it easy. I'm doing it all together. And I'm going to put the tomatillos on the lower element and the chilies a little closer to the heat element on top. And they'll cook a little more evenly that way. Should broil them for about 12 to 15 minutes or so until the skins start to char up on the peppers, and we'll take a look at that in a sec. So let me get these in the oven. All right, while my tomatillos and peppers are roasting, uh, we're gonna get our pork seasoned up here. So I have three pounds of pork shoulder boneless, and uh, it's a lightly trimmed of the fats, and you're gonna cut that into roughly bite-sized chunks or cubes, uh, maybe a little bit bigger, because uh, they will shrink a little bit. Um, so for my seasonings, I'm keeping it real simple. Uh, you can adjust as you desire and use different seasoning, but uh, I, I love this blend. So I have two tablespoons of ancho powder into my pork shoulder here, and a teaspoon of uh, freshly ground cumin. There we go. And salt and pepper to taste. And again, you can use other seasonings. A uh, nice Mexican uh, chili blend is good. Um, uh, some oregano is good in here. Um, but we have a, a really focusing on that verde sauce, so uh, really just want to keep it simple and delicious in this case. So, all right, I'm getting it all beautifully mixed, nice and rubbed in. 
All right, I'm gonna, then I'm gonna set this aside until the tomatillos and peppers are ready, and then we will make the verde sauce. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. All right, this is what your tomatillos look like when they're nicely roasted up. And this is just gonna go directly into our blender or food processor. And this is what the peppers look like, nicely roasted. You can see all the skins are charred and puffed up. And uh, we could cover them if we wanna steam them, but you can see the skins are just gonna pull right off really easily. So go ahead and skin these. All right, got the peppers all peeled, and now we're gonna, let's go ahead and get this uh, all into a food processor. All right, I got my food processor all set up. So all of the roasted tomatillos, including all the juices, just go right into the food processor, or a blender is totally fine with this as well. You see how much uh, all the juice is there. It's gonna add a lot of flavor and substance to our delicious verde sauce, like so. And I've got our roasted peppers here. All the jalapenos. Smells amazing. I love roasted peppers. It's definitely one of the best smells around. Mm, big flavor. All right, set this aside here. And we're gonna go ahead and process it until we get a delicious sauce formed up. All right, let's take a look. Oh yes, look at that beautiful, beautiful verde sauce. So easy to make. Ah, oh, this is gonna be a beautiful base for our amazing chili verde. Seriously, check it out. Look at how thick that is. Yum. <laughs> yes. All right guys, so now I have my chili pot all set up here. Uh, I've got it, uh, my pot heated to a good medium high heat. And this is an important step, I think, for flavor building. We're gonna sear all of the uh, pork shoulder, get a nice brown crust on it that seals in the flavors. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some olive oil, or vegetable oil is fine, to the pan. And I'm gonna do this in batches. I'm just gonna um, get a good sear, a few minutes per side, a couple minutes per side usually, and uh, uh, do it in batches so I don't overcrowd the pan. Because if you put too much in there, they, it kind of starts to steam a little bit and it reduces the heat quite a lot. So you don't want to overdo it. All right, see, there you go. Don't overcrowd it too much. Get a good even coating on all these guys. Yeah, look at that beautiful brown crusting that we're getting on the, on the meat. It's gonna seal in lots of flavor that way. Um, I'm gonna transfer these browned pieces to a plate. And we're gonna brown up the rest and just keep going until you're done. All right, got all my meat browned here. So next, uh, I'll get my pan, a little bit of extra oil, and I'm gonna go ahead and add a good size onion. We're gonna sear this up, soften it down a bit. All right, onions are softened up nicely. So next I have four cloves of garlic. Into the pan we go along with about a tablespoon of Mexican oregano, one of my favorite ingredients, I love it. And I'm just gonna give it a stir and cook this for about a minute or so until you can smell the gorgeous garlic blooming. Of course, one of my favorite things. All right, so here I have a half a cup of chicken stock. I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in, kind of deglaze the pan. I'm gonna scrape up a lot of the brown bits from the bottom. And then go ahead and transfer all of the brown meat back into the pan. All right, got this in the pot here. And last but not least for this segment here is the verde sauce. Just go ahead and pour in your verde sauce. Look at that. Oh, looks incredible. Incredible, my friends. Get it all mixed together here. And you can add more chicken stock if you'd like to. Uh, sometimes I'll add up to a cup or a little more if I want it to be more soupy, but the half a cup today was plenty. All right, so get everything mixed in, and then we're gonna bring it to a boil, and then we're going to reduce the heat and simmer for about two hours or so. It really just depends on the meat itself, so you'll check it for tenderness. But uh, yeah, look at that. Let's bring it to a boil. All right, yeah, got ourselves a little bit of a boil going there, so I'm gonna go ahead and reduce the heat to a uh, simmer here. 
cover it up and uh, come back and I'll probably check it like an hour to an hour and a half or so, see how it's looking. Uh, if it does reduce a little too much, you can always add a little bit of extra liquid to it. But uh, I think for now, I just kind of hang out or maybe I'll take a little nap. So my chili verde in this particular version isn't overly spicy. We're focusing more on the flavor of that verde sauce. And jalapeno is about as hot as we go. But you can really spice this up if you want to. Uh, my chili head friends, I know some of you want to. Uh, you can very easily add in some hotter peppers, either roasting them or just cook them down when you're adding the onion. Cook them into the uh, entire mix and that'll bring a lot of blooming heat to the whole pot. Also, you can easily make a crock pot version of this recipe. Uh, the simplest way is really just dump it all into a pot and let it go. But I really think the best way to do a crock pot version is to follow the whole recipe all the way through browning the meat, but then transfer everything into a slow cooker or your crock pot. Dump it all together after browning the meat and all the seasonings and making the verde sauce, and then just let it slow cook for several hours until everything is really beautifully tender and delicious. All right, let's take a look. Oh yes. Seriously, it smells so good in here. Like when it's simmering, it just drives you insane with like how good it smells. And you're like, I can't eat it yet, please. All right. All right, so I'm gonna take it off heat here. And there is a last step uh, to prepare what I like to do. So I like to swirl in a half cup or so of chopped fresh uh, cilantro. Give it that little extra verde flavor. A little bit of color, more color. And I also like some uh, fresh lime juice. Give it a nice citrus pop. Get some acidity in there. So we've got a uh, good size, average size lime. You can skip the lime if you want to, if you're not a big fan of the lime uh, too much, or just use a little bit, but uh, I do like it. It's a juicy one. Yes. Very good, very good. All right, let's swirl it around. I think you guys are gonna seriously, seriously love this. And uh, I know I'm going to, because uh, I'm about to give it a taste. Mm. Seriously, Verde, it's where it's at. Chili Verde, my friends. I hope you guys love it as much as we do. The stuff is freakishly, amazingly delicious. We love it. Um, hey, I'd love to hear what you think in the comments below. Uh, I'd also love to hear like, what's your favorite kind of chili? Are you guys more of a Verde chili, a red chili, Texas style chili? Uh, so many great ways to make it, but this is awesome. But hey, if you're looking for another pork chili recipe, you gotta check out my pork chili with hatch peppers. That is really, really good, addictively tasty. Uh, but if you're looking for another Verde type recipe to celebrate the awesomeness of Verde, you gotta try my Spaghetti Verde. I think you'll really love that one and I'll cue that up. So, uh, all right, I'll see you in the kitchen next time. Mike from Chili Pepper Madness, bye.